Let us prepare ourselves for, for worship, with our call to worship. Rejoice in God always. Come into God's house with thanksgiving and praise. For together we rejoice in our God. Worship the one whose steadfast love endures forever. Worship God with gladness in your heart. Enter God's gates with songs of thanksgiving and praise. And together we light the Christ candle, reminding us that God is with us now and forevermore. and welcome to Paul Memorial on this beautiful Thanksgiving Sunday. We're so glad you could join us and we have a few announcements of events that are going on in the life of the church. The first announcement, as you may notice, the pulpit looks a little bit different. The worship team has commissioned a member of our church to make this screen so that I'm able to preach on Sunday without a mask on. That way people who have difficulties hearing will be able to see my lips and will hopefully make for a more normal worship service. We'd like to thank the creator of this screen as it is absolutely wonderfully made. Uh, the next announcement is a reminder that during the month of October, our mini mission is going to be collecting running shoes for Apawapiskat, which is a First Nation reserve. So if you have any new or gently used children's running shoes, please bring them with you to church on Sunday, or you can call me and ask for someone to pick it up. We'll also be collecting donations for that. Now let us come together. Let us pray. Come, for now is the time to worship. Come, for now is the time to raise your voice in a song of praise. Come just as you are right now to worship the Lord, the creator of heaven and earth. Come. For now is the time to worship and praise our God. Holy Lord, we gather our hearts and minds before you this morning with a prayer of adoration as we take a moment to remember your awesome impact on the world around us and within us. For you are our God and you have promised to always walk with your people. So we ask that you would accept our sacrifice of praise and prayer. Creator God, on this Thanksgiving Sunday, we praise you for the wonderful world that you created and called good. We praise you, Lord, for the bounty of the land, for the beauty of the changing leaves, for the gentle winds that cause them to dance before our eyes. We praise you, Lord, for the many gifts the earth has given to us, from fresh water to drink to the harvest of the fields. We praise you, Lord, for the love you showed when you created this world that we call home. We praise you, Lord, for the good news you didn't stop with the creation of our planet. For throughout the ages, you have walked with your people as you brought about healing for the sick, raising up great leaders and prophets to guide your peoples in your way. We praise you, loving God, that you are a faithful Lord, slow to anger and quick to forgive, we praise you for the many ways you've guided your people, setting them free from captivity and leading them to the promised land. We praise you, mighty God, that you are still doing the same thing today for all of us. We praise you, Heavenly Father, for the gift of Jesus Christ, your love made flesh. 
We praise you, Lord, that out of love, Jesus became one of us, so we could always know that you were with us. We praise you for the many teachings of Jesus that open our eyes to see the coming kingdom of heaven. And we praise you, mighty God, for the gift of Jesus that he loved us so much he was willing to go as far as the cross and the grave for our sake, so that our sins could be forgiven and we could be brought back into a right relationship with you, our Heavenly Father. For we know the grave cannot contain the Lord of everlasting life. And because Jesus lives, so too shall all of his people. For all these things and so much more, loving God, we joyfully lift up to you our prayers of adoration, as together with one voice we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. For the children's story today, we have, well, a bit of a children's craft, as we know that Thanksgiving is a time to give thanks and to celebrate the abundant blessings that God has given to you. And so I'd like to invite slash challenge everyone to create their own Thanksgiving wreath, because there are many reasons for us to give thanks, from the food we have to eat, for the ability to go to school and learn, to the ability to come and worship without fear. So the challenge is, on Thanksgiving dinner, I invite the kids to cut out leaves in colored paper and on them write, I am thankful for. And this way you can invite everyone to write one thing they're thankful for and you can include it in your grace for that day. I am thankful for the day off school. I am thankful for our being with my family. Or as most kids might say, I'm thankful for video games. But together we can celebrate the wonderful things we're thankful for to be this weekend, but also every other day, because God gives us an abundant bounty of blessings. And when we find ourselves giving thanks, there's less time for us to get angry, upset, frustrated, or resentful. And so I invite you to make this a whole weekend of thanksgiving. And once you've written down and given thanks to the Lord what you're thankful for, Put it together in a wreath and let it hang in your house to remind you how God calls you to be a thankful person. Thanks be to God. Amen.
gospel reading is from Luke 17, verses 11 to 19. Jesus heals ten men with leprosy. Now on his way to Jerusalem, Jesus travelled along the border between Samaria and Galilee. As he was going to a village, ten men who had leprosy met him. They stood at a distance and called out in a loud voice, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. When he saw them, he said, Go, show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were cleansed. One of them, when he saw he was healed, came back, praising God in a loud voice. He threw himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. And he was a Samaritan. Jesus asked, Were not all ten cleansed? Where are the other nine? Has no one returned to give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to him, Rise and go, your faith has made you well. Then our Old Testament reading is from Deuteronomy chapter 8, 7 to 18. For the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land, a land with brooks, streams, and deep springs gushing out into the valleys and hills, a land with wheat and barley, vines and fig trees, pomegranates, olive oil, and honey. A land where bread will not be scarce, and you will lack nothing. A land where the rocks are iron, and you can dig copper out of the hills. When you have eaten and are satisfied, praise the Lord your God for the good land he has given you. Be careful that you do not forget the Lord your God, failing to observe his commands, his laws, and his decrees that I am giving you this day. Otherwise, when you eat and are satisfied, when you build fine houses and settle down, and when your herds and flocks grow large, and your silver and gold increase, and all you have is multiplied, then your heart will become proud, and you will forget the Lord your God, who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. He led you through the vast and dreadful wilderness, that thirsty and waterless land with its venomous snakes and scorpions. He brought you water out of hard rock. He gave you manna to eat in the wilderness something your ancestors had never known to humble and test you, so that in the end it might go well with you. You may say to yourself, My power and the strength of my hands have produced this wealth for me. But remember, the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you the ability to produce wealth, and so confirms his covenant, which he swore to your ancestors, as it is today. May God bless his reading of his holy word.
Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, Lord God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Well, Turkey Day has finally come, and with it, the start of the holiday rush. As soon as the bones of the bird have been transformed into soup stock, well, in any other year, we'd be getting ready to hand out candy to the children in our neighborhood as they parade around in their costumes. Then from Halloween, we jump to Remembrance Day, from Remembrance Day to Advent, and Christmas, and then the year's over. I've always found the latter part of the year always seems to rush past me as there's one celebration after another. But I know that this year is going to be different because many of us gathered here today will not be able to sit down at the giant family table with relatives and friends from all over country due to the ongoing pandemic. Things have changed. I know this, and I truly wish I had the power to make this year like every other year, but I can't. So all that you and I can do is pray for those who are seeking a cure and a vaccine, and pray that this time next year, we'll have something else to be thankful for as we gather together as one family and share the Feast of the Harvest. In many ways, this year will be different than all other years before it. But there's one thing that remains the same, pandemic or no pandemic, that this is a weekend when we're called by our God to stop and give thanks. Thanks for the fruit of the field that's on our table. Thanks for the families we've been blessed with and the friends who come into our lives. Give thanks for knowing that we are the beloved children of the living God. But have you ever stopped to wonder why Thanksgiving is such an essential part of our faith life? As each Sunday when we gather to worship, the second prayer is often called the prayer of thanksgiving and intercession. And our communion prayer is known as the prayer of great thanksgiving. Both our readings from this morning, both the Old and New Testament, speak about how God is asking us to become a thankful community for the abundant blessings we have received. But do you ever stop and question why God keeps telling us to cultivate a thankful heart? Do you think it's because God craves our thanks? that without our prayers of thanksgiving, God becomes less than what he is? Of course not. For our God does not need us to be thankful in order for him to survive. However, we, on the other hand, become less than what we could be when we forget to cultivate a thankful heart. If you don't believe me, let's take a look at the warning God gives to his people before they enter into the promised land. He starts by telling them all about the wonderful things they will receive, all because God loves them with a love that empowered them to leave behind the pain and the shame they felt being slaves in Egypt. The Lord lays out the promised land before his people pointing out all the blessings they are about to receive. Good soil in which to plant food, clean water to drink from, rocks filled with good minerals and metals that will help them grow their community. In short, God was presenting his people with a place as close to heaven as it could be on this earth, a place where they could be safe and prosper. But he, before he lets them into the promised land, he asks them to remember his gifts and to have a grateful heart. And God does this for a reason. He wants his people to help change the world, to make it a better place for all people. If the Israelites remember what God has done for them in the past, 
and allow his mercy and grace and love to shape the way they see the world, the blessings will continue to flow abundantly. They will see each day as a wonderful gift, each cup of fresh water as a blessing, each bit of food as something that should be cherished and shared and never thrown away. If the Israelites kept their promise, they would have been great stewards of the land, knowing that it was a gift given to them by the God who set them free. But unfortunately, we know they chose not to follow the Lord's wisdom. They forgot over time to give thanks. They became proud at what they had accomplished by their strength alone. They had forgotten what the Lord had done for them. And in time, they lost the land that God had given to them. By refusing to be thankful for what they had, they sought to get more, no matter the cost. And so the very people who the Lord hoped they would protect and take care of, instead became the very people they oppressed and took advantage of. And so the great city fell and the people were led once more into exile. They lost what they once had because without thanksgiving in their heart, they lost sight of who they were meant to be and fell into the same habits of those who once held them captive. And so the Lord sent them away. We see something similar happening in our New Testament reading as Jesus heals the 10 lepers. And no, Jesus doesn't rescind his healing grace when the nine never come back to give thanks. But how long do you think their sense of joy at being healed would last without having thanks in their heart? A day? A week? A year or two? Without stopping to give thanks, this group of men run the risk of forgetting what God has done in their lives. They might fool themselves into thinking that it was because of their actions they were saved. And this would have an effect on their relationship with the Lord. Or worse, they could start getting angry at the Lord for not healing them sooner. After all, some of them probably were sick for many years. And without thanksgiving, anger and frustration grow. How long before they would start muttering to themselves, why did it take God so long to reach out his hand to save them? If he was going to do it, he should have come and done it sooner, so they wouldn't have missed out so much. Luke never tells us about what happened to the healed men who did not give thanks. But it's easy to imagine what happened so long ago because our world today is full of people who refuse to be thankful for what they've been given. Some things are rather petty, such as you offering up a good used couch free to someone who's willing to come and pick it up, only to have a person call and complain that you should either deliver it yourself or give them money to move your junk that they're going to use. Other times it can become more dangerous as people feel that they're entitled to more than they need just because of who they are. And so they take everything, not caring that it might mean there's not enough for everyone else. What often comes to my mind when I think about these people is Scrooge, long before he had his visit with the three ghosts of Christmas. He seems to have everything he wants or needs and yet he's not happy. He's miserly and miserable and joyless, and it takes some strong, almost divine intervention to see a change of heart in the old man. Does this sound like the type of person our God wants us to be? Someone who's angry at the world, always trying to take everything, no matter the cost. I don't think that's what God imagined of his people when he invited them to change the world for the better. 
because that's what our Heavenly Father has invited all of us to do with our lives, to transform our world day by day, to make it a bit more like heaven than to keep the earth as it is now. And the only way we're able to do this is to follow God's advice, to seek to keep humbly, humbly offering up our prayers of thanksgiving to the Lord in our worship, in our prayers, and around our dining table, to give thanks for those around us who make our days better than the one before, each and every one of us is called by our Lord to live a life full of thanksgiving, to let people around us know that we appreciate everything that they do, to acknowledge that we've been blessed with a land of plenty, and that we should treat this land as a gift, not something we take advantage of just because we can. Our God invites us to give thanks so that the negative things in this world cannot overwhelm us and consume us and make us more negative. Our God invites us to give thanks so that we can help heal up this broken world, bind up broken hearts, build up communities of God's people, we're called to be thankful so that one day heaven and earth will be as one. And so this is my prayer for all of us this day, that we seek to give thanks to the Lord and to each other this day and all of our tomorrows, as we seek to grow to become more like the one who came back to give thanks than the other nine who forgot. For this is the good life that our Heavenly Father wants for all of his beloved people. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen.